Welcome back to Talk Dollars Make Sense with your hosts, Jess and Caleb. Today we're joined by the boys from Quantum Buyers Agency, or technically the Quantum brand, I would say. You know, Quantum Building Maintenance, Quantum, is it Rentals? That's Correct it. me if yep. I'm wrong. Yep, Quantum Rentals. Is there any others that I'm missing? Just the Buyers Advocacy. Just yeah. the Buyers Advocacy. <laughs> <laughs> the main the we trio. Got, we got Nick, Director, and Jade. So boys, thanks for jumping on. Mate, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us, guys. Appreciate it. And uh, we thought we'd grab these guys on today because you guys are very special, I think, because you're one of the few buyers agencies that I've ever heard of that have all three arms. Buyers agency, uh, building and pest, and also um, rental as well, management. Do it all. Do it yeah, all. It's, all that's package. Right. It was a very organic progression. I yeah. think when we sort of got into this, we realized, well, we looked at the industry and we thought, you know, what can we do that yeah. other people aren't? And then- through us having our clients and then engaging um, other services, outsourcing a lot of things we are. So we, we can internalise a lot of this and it's not going to be very hard with our yep. skill set and what we've got. So Definitely. it was so organic and it was so easy and it's just such a huge value add. So it wasn't like a huge vision board or anything like that? I guess not really, no, but I guess the vision board probably came after <laughs> the idea and the plan. We're like, hold on, we, there's a process we should yeah. be following here. So we yeah, sort yeah. of like went back and... And staged it and all executed out. Executed it. Yeah. yeah no, nice. it was really good and, and super cool. And yeah, we love it. And your background comes from building as well? Yes, that's Self, right. Yeah. So just over a decade in the building industry, as anyone would know, and all the stories that you hear, it's pretty hectic and <laughs> trying to find tradies and yep. everything like that. And um, yeah, it was, again, super easy. Yeah. Um, it was like that scene out of the Wolf of the Wall Street, Wolf of Wall Street where they're in that <laughs> diner and they're like, show me how much you made. That pretty much happened to a <laughs> mate of mine. And my mate's like, I just did a deal. And like, yeah. we did this, this, this. And, and I was like, man, that's like, that seems like too easy. Awesome. And like, yeah. and you got to help the person find the house and, and a few buyers agents started reaching out to me, uh, yep. asking me, "Hey, mate, we need your help with um, some some building knowledge, and yep. we need to understand like what we can do with this property." And I said, "Well, can't you just tell them that they can do a renovation?" They're like, no, no, because we don't know, like, you know, the structure, like, is steel post, concrete post, yep. you know, is it a pre-war, post-war, like anything about the house? So, um, yeah, I just sort of started helping helping these guys out, and then. I got offered a job um, and had a job interview and yep. then we just wound down building and, and kept going with um, with uh, the buyer's advocacy stuff. And yeah, nice. I, I did have another mate at the time who sort of said, hey, I need to go and I, I'm trying to build these houses with granny flats out the back. Yeah. So if you can find me some of those sites, then that'd be great. And so as a builder, I was just knocking on people's doors saying, <laughs> like, hey, I want to buy your house off you because we're going to put a granny flat out the back. Yeah, and nice. uh, then he sort of, you know, suggested I should jump into it and yeah. we just did like it was that was it we went we finished the year up as builders and started as buyers agents so awesome yeah it was really cool it is very cool and um maybe touch on a bit more about how that sort of progression went from i guess being from builder to a buyer's agent a bit about your background and things like that so um my obviously we did a lot of client work as yep. a builder um but obviously every builder's dream is to sort of build their own property portfolio and build their own houses yeah, and yeah. either keep them and sell them. And my wife and I were doing that a lot. And it is hands down the best way to make money as House anyone flipping. in any podcast will, yeah, yeah. will ever tell you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we thought, hey, there's an opportunity. And, th and then once the, the buyer's advocacy sort of stuff started, yep. um, we thought there's an opportunity here to help people do exactly what we do. So yep. we're not reinventing the wheel. We're not providing a, a purchase only. We're actually providing this, this service where we're doing what we do on the weekends, yep. building our own property. Yeah. So from that background of, of building, like Jess and I were spending our weekends um, renovating our own properties. Yep. And again, like we just tried winding down that client side of things and yep. increasing doing our own stuff. Yep. And then the buyer's adv advocacy came as the perfect vessel to continue for us to do that yep. as well as do help other people do it as well. So mm -hmm. we've like white labeled some software that allows us to sort of pr give our clients a progression plan of, nice. of helping yep. them hit their milestones. Um, I had a business manager in my building company yep. and she came with me to the buyer's advocacy. I've got my sister as my PA and obviously I've got all these bright, brilliant ideas in my head, but actually being able to sit down and turn everything yep. into a process is, yep. is a whole nother kettle of fish. So 100%. we spent six months, nearly $200,000 just putting every single thing from inside our heads and our ideas into a process yep. and a back end so that someone like Jade can come along and we can say, hey, we've got this process that mm. that does what no one else can yep. do. 
where we're literally starting from property A, we're showing our clients how we can engineer value. We're yep. using that that building knowledge to get price reductions and work with the selling agent on the best possible price for our our clients. As like ten minutes ago, I literally we just got fifteen thousand dollars off a of price because of yeah, a good. leaky roof, um, and then you know progress their second yep. and third. So we're we're taking the buyer out of the the buying market because we're setting them up for their second, third, fourth, and fifth purchase. Definitely. And so, for example, like when Jade joined the team, you know, all this knowledge that we've sort of learnt over the years and we've yep. built on has yep. just been passed in through that process yeah, that nice. we've created through to Jade. And yep. now, obviously, you know, we're doing it together down here on the Gold Coast, Brizzy and, and the Sunny Coast. So good. On that, Jade, yeah. give us a bit of background about yourself. What made you become a buyer's agent? May I? And what led you to the journey of joining Quantum and starting up, I guess, the Gold Coast office, so to speak? Um, look, I kind of just fell into it. So... I guess a bit of background about myself. I, I was in the sales side, so selling properties for um, for a little while. For and yeah, one of my mates from um, Brisbane. I was looking to go into selling in Brisbane. A mate of mine was just like, "Yeah, look, um, have you ever thought about going into the buyer's agency?" So I was just like, N- "Something I've never kind of experienced." You know, um, I always dealt with the buyers through the selling side, but never actually purchased the, the um, you know the property. Um, yeah, kind of did that and went in, had a chat with, um, with Simon, um, during the time of the buyer's agency and I was just like, love the process of helping the buyers and yeah, kind of just fell into it. And then one year later I had a chat with Nick and I just loved the, the process of the way that Nick kind of, he's, he's got, you know, a large aspects on, on the building side yep. and kind of just went into, to his team. So yeah. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> it was very easy. I think we were very aligned. We're very specific on yeah. who joins our family. Like yeah, it's yeah. Um, the culture has to be right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like our culture is hands down. Like behind closed doors is yeah. the best thing ever. Like we've all got each other's backs, and you know, there's in. I don't, I don't think it's just real estate, but any industry, there's this like dog eat dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's this persona that might be. Oh, we're such a great team, but you know, behind closed doors, I think it's a different thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's very family orientated as well, the team, which is what I really liked. So hundred percent. And like yeah. there's of course there's beefs. Like there's yeah. always people have got arguments and, you know, sometime like there was one last week, like and then an hour later they were like on a call doing a deal together. And yeah. like yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> like if you've got the ability to sort of be able to say yeah. what you want to your coworkers yeah. and then an hour later you're like working a deal together that came on like an hour after your fight, <laughs> yeah. that says something about the team that you've got. So if like they we know to put that aside. Yeah. And, yeah, and and we've all got each other's. It's a value thing, right? Mm. You've got to have a value alignment with the people who you're yep. you're on that on Definitely. that work train with. And I think that's the most important for us. Like we we I've literally had someone who has filled out a consultation form. We've sat down. We've had a consultation. Me thinking that they're a buyer wanting to get use our services, and then they've said, "Hey, I really want a job." Here's what I can provide. I've got this experience. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm not joking. And I'm like, ah, oh, well, like, you know, uh, here oh, I am pitching to them. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah. It, it's kind Maybe of. Maybe that's the secret to job hunting these days. Just like inquire for their services. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you get to understand the process as well. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, oh, no, I don't want to do this. Or exactly. Yeah. Yeah, part yeah, of the team, true, so. yeah. yeah. That's so cool. Very different, eh? Yeah. <laughs> very different. No, we're, we're very fortunate. Actually, no, we're not fortunate. We work hard to create yeah. our, our good team environment. So, yeah. And um, I don't know if it's just me that saw this on social media the other day, but we're ranked third in the world for renovations. Yes. Uh, in I terms of that. a country. Yeah. And I can't remember who beat us. I think it's Singapore and someone else. I remember Singapore stuck in my head. But <laughs> uh, we're ranked number three. So Aussies love a good renovator. 100%. We love The Block. We love nearly every renovation TV show that exists. At one stage, yeah. there was The Block, House Rules, every possible TV show that had to do with property and renovating at one yeah. stage. Um, I know personally, my family, like everything that runs through the blood every time they've told us is like, buy a property that you can install value in and do it up. You've bought a property. Yeah. You've done it up. Worst house yeah. on the best street. I think there's this natural Aussie love for doing something and adding character to it. Yeah. My wife has an obsession with cottages Mm. and Queenslanders and she has this idea that we're going to buy a really terrible house and do it up and make it amazing. Yes, Of course, all white and beige. So off the back of that, could you guys maybe give the listeners some insight into what makes actually a good renovator, not something where you're just rocking up, 
that house looks like it's a piece of shit. I'm going to add some value to it. There's obviously got to be a lot more to that. So what it actually takes to sort of picking out a good deal when you are looking to do a renovator? Yeah, look, that's music to our ears. Like a lot of people do see those as issues and I just see it as it's as cliche as it is, as opportunity, <laughs> yeah. right? We quantify every defect with yep. the property and then we can say, hey, here's, you know, the market's here yep. and here's all these issues and we've got a dollar figure on each yep. one of those those defects or those problems with the property. So we see the value around here. So Very nice. And that's yeah. how we do our deals because it's not like we're just being super cheeky, you know, market vows uh, 1.2 and we're just going in, oh, it will give you $900,000. <laughs> so being able to quantify those issues yeah. with the property, I think is where you'll get, you know, that great, that, that purchase that yep. you, you're looking for. Like you said, buying the worst house on the best street. Um, looking at your end result. So what do you, what, where you, does that property need to be positioned for you to make money or yeah. for it to be, um, you know, that property that your dream home. So yep. For example, if you're buying a, you know, a two bedroom, a lot of cottages are only two bedrooms originally. Yep. So two bedroom, one bath, but the fully renovated four bed, two bath, two car with a pool, are selling for a million dollars more. Mm. Then you know that you have to to make you know a twenty to thirty percent profit. It's pretty yep. easy to spend you yep. know, seven or eight hundred thousand dollars on that renovation. So it all comes back to numbers. So yep. if you can start from your end goal and reverse Work engineer backwards. it, the more stepping stones you put in place, the more control you'll have over that end result. Yep. If you just said, right, end result's $2 million sale price, we're purchasing for one renovation in the middle, it's going to be a bit loose. But if you break it down to, right, we're going to put a pool in, um, landscape, we're going to lift the property, build under, you know, mm. we're going to make it a four bed, two bath, yep. all that sort of stuff, then that's probably the best way to do it because there's more check-ins along the way yep. and you can control that process and execute as per your plan. Yep. And, um, you know, it's you're essentially you're eliminating the risk yep. by doing so. So they're the, so the sort of the key things that we, we try and take into account when we're, um, when we're looking for those kind of properties for our clients. Yep. And ultimately, that's every single client, whether they engage us to or not, we're going to say, we're going to show them how we can s- execute yep. to make the most amount of money fr- on the other side as well. So we've, the new company that we've just started, QBM, it's called Quantum Building Maintenance, um, my business partner, in that Jack, um, his full-time job now is going through and adding value to those clients' properties That's and awesome. providing awesome. these reports yep. on how we can actually do that for our clients. So now we can, we've can we actually got a full report that we can quantify And you that. can actually be the ones to action that for them. If they choose. If like they choose. We're, yeah. we're, we're not, you know. That's we're, we're awesome. Shoving it down their throat. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Build with knock, us. Knock, knock. <laughs> Guess who it is. Yeah. So you've got all the contacts. Like it's kind of a one-stop shop, shop like you can provide the plan and if people if your clients go yep that all sounds great 100 percent. it's not just like oh okay well now i'm left to figure it out on my own you have that yep. experience to take them through the whole process that's yeah. amazing so that's w- so great we've actually put together a list of trades and they're like our inside inside trades oh, and yeah. Yeah, we nice. will then give them to our clients as a sort of like not a gift but just yep. like here's all the people who will help you get to where you need to be because yeah. it doesn't matter if we do it or they do it themselves the end mm. result that they engaged us for is to create that equity mm-hmm. in the property yeah so if they can get there on by themselves and they save money that puts them in a better cash position on the end of the yep. at the mm. at the completion and what does that mean it means they're going to come back to us to buy and more. buy the next property yep. with us. Yeah. So it's not just a quick purchase now. It's the second, third, fourth, fifth, et cetera. Yeah. So, yeah. Off the back of what you said before about, I guess, breaking down into steps and more check-ins. Yep. I think a really good call out is a lot of people don't understand what actually adds value. I think it's like very much a buzzword when you're talking about renovations is like, yeah, oh, let's right. add value to this property. Yeah. Well, what, let's break it down maybe a little step further. Like what is some actual actionable things that will add value to a property? Let's just say you have a typical house, you know, it's a blank blank screen, so to speak. Yep. What could I do to add value to it? So it's pretty simple, right? Traditionally on realestate.com, what are the most expensive houses? Yep. Their location Number of bedrooms, yep. number of bathrooms, number of car spaces, and pool. So that is as simple as it is for us. Yep. So we say, obviously, suburbs have got higher median prices than others mm. do. Yep. So we say, right, if you're... So the land, yep. first and foremost. Yep. That's right. So land, location, amenities, distance to CBD, the beach, whatever it might be. Yep. So that's the first 
sort of thing. And we can't really change that, but that's how we will measure like, you know, the suburbs and, and what's going to be the right area to buy in. Secondly, like I mentioned, if they're going to buy a two bedroom cottage, how can obviously a four better is going to sell for a lot more than a two better. Yeah. Yeah. How can we make this a four bedroom, two bathroom yeah. rather than the f- two bedroom, one bathroom. So by adding those additional um, bedrooms and bathrooms, you're obviously engineering more value into it. And if, as long as you don't overcapitalize and you stick to keep to your budget, then that end result by purely just looking on those like REA and domain, you will see, right. The, the median price for the sale price of a four better in this area is $2 million and we're yeah. paying one million. So, as long as we can do that budget for that amount, then yep. you know we're going to stay within the parameters of our, our yeah. goal. So, um, that would probably be the main thing: bedrooms and bathrooms, because yep. you're appealing to a wider range. Obviously, a family's not going to look at a two bedroom place; um, yep. they'll look at four and fives. Um, pools are really hit and miss, and that was one thing I realized with building uh, the building business as well. Like we'd have this amazing opportunity to put a nice pool in for our clients, and they'd be like, "Oh no, I don't want a pool; they cost too much and they're hard to maintain." But Sometimes they're a huge value add. They either go one or the one way or the other. <laughs> yeah. um, what about with how? I know this is probably something that just comes up in my circles, but I've always had the argument come through within families. Well, the pool takes out you know this much section of the yard. You know if they've got kids and stuff. Yep. Is that true? Is there something that's viewed in the industry? Is that sometimes? Um, well, obviously there is like that physical square meterage yep. loss that you're losing, but you are also gaining a pool. So. <laughs> Um, in yeah. summer, you would probably be thanking yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. Um, but it, when we do have those arguments, and often it's like with, it's within the family, they're like they're having that bind. Yeah. Yep. So we, someone wants a pool, someone doesn't. That's right. Someone's yep. going to clean it. Yep. Someone just wants to enjoy <laughs> yeah. it. <laughs> but then we just say, well, why don't we buy a place like within 200 meters of a park? Like, how? What, yep. What's your comfort level for letting mm. your kids walk to the park by themselves? And they're like, oh, you know, maybe like 10 houses, five houses. Yep. And we're like, okay, cool. So we just section out those suburbs. Yep with those parks, draw like a circle around it. And we're yep. like, here are our key streets. Yep. And it has gotten to the point where we're like knocking on doors being like, Hey, can we buy your house? Hey, can we buy your house? I've literally had a, an expat come back from the UK being like, I've, I grew up in a Queenslander. I want five bedrooms. My backyard has to be facing North cause I want full sun all year. My, I want my pool East West because I don't. And someone, I was like, whoa, 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 like hold up. That's <laughs> like, you know, we can do, Miracles, but yeah. but that's a real miracle. Yeah. <laughs> like proper. we're good, but that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. The sun so, must set on this side of the house. Yeah, yeah blah, blah, blah. but you know what? Like we we catered for it. We ended up finding the house didn't have a pool, but yeah. it was facing the right direction. Um, they wanted like colors, even they wanted exterior colors within. And I was like, Does he not realize he can paint? Like you can change renovated. that that part. <laughs> it's that yeah. part can change. Yeah, it's just educating. We put them in touch with the pool builder, the painter, yeah. and everything. Yeah. And you know, it's probably been a year now. And guess what? They've got all the stuff that they wanted. So How look, good. you made um, the miracle happen. Yeah. Well, it's just piecing together. It's not. I guess that saying miracles can't happen isn't true. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to Nick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well. Um, how yeah, do cool. people go with you knocking on their doors? It's, it's sometimes it's received like the wrong way. And people <laughs> are like, yeah. is this person trying to sell me solar panels or is this a joke? <laughs> yeah. But I, actually people get taken back by it and they're yeah. like, actually, you know, we, we did have this discussion six months ago, but we decided against it. But, you know, maybe it is something for us to, to have a think about. Yeah, so wow. we've bought probably 10 off mm-hmm. yeah, wow. direct to vendor yeah. in our time, which is, you know, not much, yep. but um, it's it's definitely interesting because I guess this is how a sales agent would feel because you're, you're nurturing, you've got to nurture both sides. Mm. So you, yeah. you can't, yeah. obviously our job is to be, is to represent the buyer as best as we can. And yep. in that scenario though, you, you're also, you've got a, this onus on, on the seller as well that, mm. you know, I, yes, I'm engaged by the, the, the buyer here, but I've got to make sure that they, actually have a good experience with this too because I don't want to be seen as I've just come in and just ripped them off and just yeah, taken exactly. their, yeah. their house away from yeah. them. So, yeah. um, and all of those experiences have actually been some of the best ones that we've had. And the the seller actually ended up get, giving Coming us back. a Google review in one instance. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, they actually had already bought an apartment. Did they then yeah. come to you to help them buy their next property? Well, I was laying the groundwork. As soon as that contract was signed, <laughs> I'm like, guys, wh- where are you going next with this? Like, and um, They're like, Melbourne. You're like, all right. <laughs> Flight's booked. So my application's going to take eight weeks to be approved in Melbourne. I'll be down there. So, yeah. Um, 
yeah, I wish we could have signed them up straight away. But no, they were, yeah. I think they were in, they'd, they'd bought a unit and they'd bought a caravan, so they were going traveling. Oh, but, um, the dream. Yeah. But look, it was cool. It was, it was, um, it was cool to be able to do that. So, but yeah, it does happen. And seller advocacy, is that something you guys also offer? We have, yes. Um, it's, we're just sort of, again, organic, like seems yep. to be everything that we do. If people are at the point in which they are selling, um, then we will sort of say, hey, can we help out with this? Yep. Uh, the first few we did for free just um we like they would sign up for the buyer's advocacy and then they would we would just offer the seller's advocacy for free and because they were looking to upgrade or yeah Yeah, what does that consist of so that the phone call i was literally on 10 minutes ago was a client our very first seller's advocacy so um i met them at a four-year-old birthday party and they were telling me what they're doing and i had no intentions of signing them up i just said oh look cool look out for this look out for that blah 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 and then I got an, a, a website inquiry and, they, and it was them because uh, I didn't get their number or anything. And they yeah. sort of said, we need help because we don't know what selling agent to use. Yep. Everyone's quoted different comms. Everyone's quoted different marketing. We, you know, we don't know our, our demographic we're, we're pitching to. Is it people like mm. us? And we just sort of sat them down. And these guys, I didn't realize how much of a, a bind they're in. They'd worked themselves into the biggest huff and the parents were involved. And I said, stop. Let's just, again, like look at yep. the data. Who are we pitching to here? Who's which sales sales agent has got the best track record in this suburb for this particular product? Yep. It can't be the houses. It can't be the one bedroom. It was a townhouse. And I said, and we just approached that agent. We negotiated commission, so we got a, a a reduced commission for them. We had we got the data on how marketing packages and which marketing packages had been more successful than others, and we ended up going with no, no marketing package photos. And just putting it on realestate.com. And in the first weekend, we had three offers and our clients' expectations were like five fifty and we sold it for six twenty. Wow. So, wow. That's and, so and, good. and it, it was literally like they just gave us all of the control. It was crazy. It, it yep. felt weird making these decisions. And uh, <laughs> anyway, and um and we came back to them and said, Hey, we've got six hundred and twenty grand offer. Yep. Do you want to sign it? And they're like, yeah, that's amazing. That's so good. So then we've moved on to the, the purchase side of things and we've obviously got- you helping them with that as well. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's the one that we've actually charged them for. Oh, and so now awesome. we've got 70 grand more. We can buy a better, a better yeah, house, house. Yeah. Um, which we have. They like we originally only were only aiming for a three better. Yep. We bought a four better on the top of a hill. Great outlook. And now again- and This is the one with the reduction? Yeah, so we've just got another $15,000 off good. the price. So, um, and you so know- You've made them 70 k then yeah. you've- Give them back 15 as well. So yeah, good. yeah. It's a perfect world. So, and again, it's just because at, when we first had that meeting, they're like, oh, I don't think we can afford an investment property. And I said, why not? Like, why can't you? Because I don't think you understand how much equity you can create mm-hmm. by doing little things. And then mm. you can draw back from it. It just takes like, a good broker and you can cross collateralize and buy again. And it's, it's not hard. It's mm. really not hard. And that's something that we, we practice what we preach. We do it like this the place that we've just bought on the sunny coast, this investment property, we're documenting and filming the whole thing because we're buying things off Facebook marketplace. We're doing a lot of work (laughs) ourselves because we're showing people that we can engineer value into this property. And I'm trying to get 120 K in three months. That's what we're trying to, we're trying the value we're trying to engineer. And for a $600,000 house, that's only, that's a 20% deposit. Yep. So again, you just, cross collateralize it and you can go again yep. you you can if with the right broker and you get paid mm. the right amount of money and all that sort of stuff you yep. can then get a pre-approval to go and buy another property yeah so and just showing people that process working in with their broker their financial planner and putting all the the players on the team yep we're sort of setting up showing that, that it's not rocket science yeah that can seem like it that's right exactly that's awesome yeah. in terms of the seller advocacy side what made you sort of get into that space so to speak is it more because you guys have the data and you understand i guess what buyers are looking for so then you want to reverse engineer that for sellers or as it look um it's come naturally again from so what was the question why did we get in that yeah like why why? was was there like a particular reason that you guys sort of thought you know what this is why we're going to do it we have the buyer market we understand metrics whatever it is well we work with so many selling agents on the buyer side a lot of the people that we're meeting with hadn't sold yet and they were in that in that early stages of just yep. talking to those selling agents. So and then I was I was just saying, Oh look, we've just done deal with this person. We would suggest using them. Because yep. throughout yep. our process, like and every buyer's agent will say, there's buyers agents that you meet that you would sell your own property through and ones that you wouldn't. 
Yeah. So yeah. we were just giving that information to those clients yep. for free, right? And then, you know, I said, check in with us when you're ready to go. And I guess it was controlling more of that process and having keeping tabs on what our clients were doing. And we we have team weekly team meetings and we just go through all these – every week is a different subject. And we don't get, like, guest speakers in. We literally just start a conversation, have a topic, and just yep. let it go. And one of the th- one of the things we discussed this week was controlling – having check-ins with our clients throughout that process to keep them on the right track because they're, they're dealing with it as an emotion, right? It's so easy for it just to, to go off in the wind and like, yep. you know, they can or get become too hard. In, or, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And by us having that, like we're their accountability partner throughout yep. that process, we thought this is a value add that we can help them out. It's obviously good for our business because – you know, it's another opportunity for us to, to make some money in the Trolling process. that timeline kind of thing. That's right. Rather than having them from here to here, you also get them here. Correct. Yeah. And um, and so that's how it started. And, yeah. you know, it was actually a big house on the river was the f- was this first, <laughs> um, this meeting I had where I thought I could introduce you to the person who I know will have the right buyers for this property. Yeah. And they always say, do you reckon you've got the right buyers? And I was like, <laughs> you don't want us negotiating <laughs> Both to buy your property because <laughs> we're going to screw you down. I'm, I'm like, remember, our job is to represent the, the buyer. buyer. Yeah. And they're like, oh, true. Okay. I'm like, yeah, so you don't want that. Like, if yeah. you want me to be a good buyer's agent for you when you sell this place, yep. I've got to be one beforehand too. So yep. that's kind of why we brought that in. So. No no conflicts. So. That's right. No <laughs> conflicts. And yeah. it is a fine line, I swear. My, my lawyer, I'm on a retainer with him now because every week I'm like, hey, mate, I need this, I need this, I need this. So, yeah, it's about like, you know, st- keeping everything above yeah. board and, you know, it's... Uh, it keeping is, everyone happy as well. So. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. So, no, it's cool. We're really happy with where the seller's advocacy is going and it's, yeah. uh, it's just a value add to our current service and you can opt in or opt out. It's that's super awesome. easy. Yeah. 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 Um, back on sort of the conversation of renovators... I saw, I think it was on Instagram, I don't know if you saw the same thing, about kitchens now becoming the biggest trend for what buyers are looking at. Uh, yeah, I mean, it? the kitchen's the heart of the home. The heart of the home. In Australia it is, It is, sure. yeah. Yeah. What do you find from a data position of, is that something worth looking into as a value add for renovation? Or like is if it you had to update one, is it like if you'd say bathrooms if you had tight or budget. kitchens yeah. or... And you had to select whether I want to do the bedroom, whether I want to do the bathroom, mm. whether I want to do the kitchen. Or like update the whole house by painting and new floors or something. Like what's the biggest, what do you see? Yeah. If someone had 20 grand, what would they put that into first? Look, I think Australians naturally are just like entertainers. Love. Yeah. Yep. Love a, like a shrimp on the bar. Well, yeah. <laughs> Why is Bunnings the number one uh, yeah. retail store? That's right. And the sausage, the Bunnings snacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah, probably second on the retail yeah. list. Bunnings sausage at home. So – um. Unfortunately, 20 grand won't get you much in the regards to a, a kitchen these days. Correct. But yeah. what we've always done, and again, like my wife Jess and I, we would always build an entertaining space around the mm-hmm. kitchen. And I look at that when I'm buying a property. And again, it's like it's not hard for us to give this info to our clients because we just look at the things that we do when we're actively buying. So yeah. um, entertaining space, I believe, is probably the best, um, is the best value add to any house. How can, how can someone bring their family, their friends over and have everyone involved. And quite often, you're right, that is in the kitchen. So having a very um, smooth transitioning kitchen to dining, to living, to outdoor, I think is really key. key. That open yeah. plan. Yeah, that, the, having that nice aspect. And mm-hmm. that's kind of what we would always try and suggest. Like, And the, and the biggest thing that people say is, How, can I remove this wall? Can I remove that wall? So which wall is non-load bearing and, and all that sort of stuff. Yep. So then we can advise, we get in the roof, we sort of say, yep, you can remove this wall. Obviously, we'd suggest you speak to a, a structural engineer, um, blah, 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 but it can be done. Mm. So um, that is probably the best value add, I believe, with 20 grand is remove some walls, create that real flow through living. Yep. Um, Tight. I always love the floor love the, pan sort yeah. of aspects. Yeah, mm. not knowing where the indoor finishes and the outdoor starts. I think that's such a good part of any entertainer's home. Mm. It's just got this nice smooth transition yep. indoor and outdoor. And yeah, I reckon that's that's probably Would where you it's say at. it sticks for both owner occupiers and investors in that regard. Well, yeah, I guess it does. It depends on the area because the, and the whole you know I've, with our rent company, we've obviously got a whole rental team, right? So yep. we're trying to keep up to date with what's going on the rent and what with the housing crisis that's going on in Australia right now, what they're trying to do is 
you can't create rentals as a more permanent thing. So they're reducing the amount of um, check-ins that you, you need to do, like yep. the mandatory check-ins. So there is th- going to be this full movement about creating rental properties to becoming more of a home. Yep. So so not something that where someone just comes in, lives in it for a couple of months and leaves, exits. exits. That's right. Yeah, yeah, it's more of like how can we keep these guys long-term? Correct. Not want to leave. That's right. So yep. I think taking that into mind and moving forwards, like this is discussions that will probably be mandated towards the end of the year. Yep. Yeah. That's probably the right um, idea to have for your investment property is to create it more of a home, a home yeah. environment where people can stay for five to 10 years yep. rather than just, you know, one year and then move out. Yep. So yep. I would be doing that. I would be, I always say, w- we always do personally, I always build the house to the best quality I can afford at the time. And it's something that I would want to live in because yeah. you're mitigating risk in you're getting a higher quality client yep. or a high quality renter. If you do need to liquidate any assets, you know that it's going to be a premium product. So you yep. can actually sell it for that higher price point and it will be easier to sell mm-hmm. because it doesn't have those resistance or those pain points that a shitter property would. Yeah. Exactly. And heart of the home, like you said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kitchen. 100%. Is it as simple as with bedrooms then? As, you know, because you guys have the rental company. Is it as simple as more bedrooms, you know, X dollars per week kind of thing? Is that sort of yeah, 100%. how you guys view yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. And a big thing I've realised is pets. Like pets is such a huge... I didn't... <laughs> I never thought that, you know, pets or no pets is a mm. big thing, but yeah. it is massive having pets. Is so. it true in Queensland the laws changed where you have to at least have a decent reason why they can't have a pet? Yeah, I think you can't say no to someone because you have yeah, to consider I've it. Heard that too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, isn't this for apartments and stuff like that? I don't know about apartments, but I know that dealing we've got this yeah, house. It's like I'm gonna get a dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am actually, I'm actually, I'm actually thinking about it. With, with of course partner. you do, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> thinking about Frenching. Oh, he's like asking so for a friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Frenchy, you live in Palm Beach. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> You're just like taking it. Got the stereotype book of the Gold Coast. Yeah, yeah the <laughs> dog. <laughs> dog. <laughs> what do hot girls do in summer? That's what I want to start doing. Hot girl walks. <laughs> yeah. Burley, Burley um, Hill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so bedrooms, adding pets, yeah. and just making it, you know, a bit, yep. bit yeah. cool and cool. Yep, just Air giving cons. that on an occupier appeal to a renter. Yeah, yep. to yep. a renter. That's right, because that's ultimately where we're going. Like this whole housing affordability thing, and I think it is going. It obviously is getting harder to buy yeah, property, definitely. and I think having setting these people up, um, you know, in these homes, which is what they're trying to do. Yep. Um, so making it as comfortable as it possibly can to the renter. Yep. You're gonna get a a better rent, a better investment. You got a high, more high quality investment, so you're just safeguarding yourself, really. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it'll change the mindset for renters as well, because they're staying in a good quality home. They'll t- look into buying a property as well. Yeah. So, in terms of Airbnbs, then what do you think the strategy will be there? Particularly, do you guys manage any Airbnbs currently? No, we don't. No, no. We, we've got a company who we work for for that. Yep. So kind of like a whole different. Yeah, kettle kettle fish, fish, yeah. Uh, it's kind of like buying advocacy and yeah. selling advocacy or yeah. buyer's agent and selling agent. It's mm. sort of the opposite side of the fence, so, really. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so it's actually been a really good experience, me personally going through it with this investment property that yep. we've just purchased on the Sunshine Coast. So the way I went about it was looking for areas that had tourist attractions or um, sp- I guess things that attracted people to the area that – and there was a shortage of accommodation. So yeah. once I picked those suburbs out, I just sort of went hard and, and found areas in that area, or houses in that area, I should say. And then we thought, okay, how many beds are the, like optimal for, for the um, for Airbnb bathrooms? Yeah. What is a pool appealing or not a pool? And like, so in my area, it's like a lot of climbers and hikers. Yeah. So we're like, right, it's just going to be one or two night stays. So you can't do like a minimum of three nights. And once you work out like all the algorithm behind it, you sort of get a product which you need to create at the end of it. Yep. So we obviously do a high level of due diligence. So there's a lot, of, a lot of data reviewing and that heaps kind of stuff. Heaps of yeah. data, yeah. yeah and we, we pretty early on engaged this company to understand all of this information. And they pretty much gave us a 74% occupancy rate. <laughs> and it was like... I can't remember the amount per week, but it was huge. It was 8.8% yield where the property wow. sat. Yeah, wow. The day it settled. So... Like without your renos. Without the renos. Yeah, wow. wow. So then that's when we sort of went back to the Airbnb management company we're using. We sort of said, now we need all this data of how we can 
improve at all. So, because mm, yep. um, that's what we would do as if we were uh, working, doing our buyer's advocacy service for yep. a client. We would provide all that data yep. before we bought the property and it just 8.8%. I was like, wow, that's like that's awesome. <laughs> no brain. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Crazy. No brain. <laughs> so, and if I can go in there and spend like ten, twenty thousand dollars yeah. $20,000 on this, then, you know, it could go, they could go up to 10%. Yep. So, yeah, so that's exactly what, you, what I've done. Sorry, what are you thinking in your um, like 10 to 20 grand reno on that place? So the Airbnb with the, they both have one bed, one bath. So they didn't have, the second one didn't have a bathroom. Oh, okay. But yeah. one so thing I checked one, out one was bed. I got a plumber there and I made sure that all the sewer and everything Perfect. was run to that yeah. second dwelling. So I knew it had a kitchen. So I knew there must have been a sewer connection somewhere. So we, um, we double checked all of that. Um, so we bought the tiles just super cheap. We just found some like really nice looking but generic tiles. They were all new. Obviously, your all your tapware and everything like that that has to be well. It doesn't have to be, but it has to be watermarked, which is the, like the Australian standards yep. yeah. print um, for it to be certified. So we had to we we bought new stuff, but it was all relatively cheap. But like bath, I bought a second hand a brand new second hand bath from someone who didn't end up doing a renovation. Yeah. The glass nice. again. The kitchen came from Marketplace. Yeah, it was Hazel a Marketplace. It was an ex-display kitchen. It was two grand. Um, <laughs> yeah. So all the flooring, like, just yeah. again, super, just a soup, like, super cheap. Run off the off. It was a uh, what do they call it? Discontinued range. Yeah. That's what we sweet. did to our flooring too. It was like two tiles. One was not tiles. Sorry, they were timber planks we got, and one was like sixty dollars per like square meter, sort of and stuff? one was twenty. Yeah. And I was like, oh, because I was looking at the two going, I don't know. And then we asked the price and I was like, oh, well. Decision made. <laughs> right. I can't tell, so we'll let the price yeah. decide. <laughs> no, that's what, and that's, you've got to be really, you've got to be stern with that sort of stuff because, yeah. it, again, I always catch myself, I'm like, oh, I love the look of that. Like, <laughs> and yeah. we just sort of go off on this tangent. So, yeah, yeah so it was a, I, it was a two bedroom, one bathroom, one car. So we've made it two bed, two bath, two kitchens. Wow. Oh, Two yeah, dwellings. because they're separate. Yeah. Oh, wow, nice. So it, it's just moving higher up in that. So like previously, was it like a like they were renting out the whole as a one kind of thing, or were they it still doing it separate? Owner Rock, and I think she had her uh, um, grandkids stay in the other oh, one. Oh, like a granny yeah. flat kind of. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but they're the same style. So co- beautiful gotcha. cottage. Like yeah. It's got character. So, so this awesome. is the first time it's going to be used as an Airbnb, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's right. Obviously, you've got to go. You've got to check all your your local governments and and stuff to see if you can do it again and like we check all that out but yeah um yeah it's once we sort of ticked all the boxes and it, it was everything that we were looking for an in investment yeah. and the, we negotiated on price we went straight in there and, and purchased it so awesome yeah so like, stand good. by watch this space yeah <laughs> we might be back uh, on this time next year being like guys don't do it <laughs> what was that you gonna do a youtube channel because you said you're gonna record it um Look, I dabble with the old YouTube <laughs> idea from time to time. I think we get so caught up in work, we actually yeah. just forget to do all this you stuff. Have, like the misses in your face when they come in, you're like, get out of my face. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've just put on a business development manager full time. Yeah. And his job is to make sure that we do all of these content ideas yeah. and everything like that. And our tone of voice is being presented yeah. in the way in which, you know, our, we call it the BA Bible, present, it instructs us to. Yep. Yeah. Um, so we will do that. We do have a YouTube account where we do put a lot of like videos and updates and stuff on, but, um, yeah, we are wanting to get more into that educational piece so we can provide people with documentation. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, Like it's not, we're not, again, it's not rocket science. We're not reinventing any wheels here. We're just putting all the data in place and just, yeah, making it a step-by-step process. Process. That's, and that's what has prompted, not necessarily this purchase, but it just coincided with us purchasing the investment property and we're like, hey, we're at this time, stage of business. What you guys business. want to do? Yeah. Let's go. So there will be some pretty cool content around that. And nice. I, I think it's so. You see so many people out there, like buyers agents, are, are very guilty for it. This paint this picture. If you just think this is, this is impossible. Like, <laughs> yeah, I've got seventy five properties, and I'm twenty one years old, and my <laughs> property portfolio is worth six hundred million dollars, and I'm going to retire yeah. when I'm thirty. You're like. The news.com.au okay. sort yeah. of feature stories. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, that that's doesn't not, add up. Yeah. It's just not right. Yeah. Like I just, just breeze past it. It's just, you can't, there's no connection yeah. with the common man in there. Right. Like. I love the ones that says, 
I got it all on a 55k annual salary. Yeah. It's like, you're like <laughs> please explain. It's like, yeah. <laughs> well, mum and dad went guarantor for the first 10. And, uh, <laughs> then I got gifted funds. And I, and I did it in a 1% interest rate environment. Yeah. I'm yeah. struggling now, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. But interest rates just went up. And yeah, now my repayments have gone up by half a million a year. But no, so I guess it was it was about just being, yeah, like in touch, right? And we, we talk about values a lot. Yeah. You've got to have a values alignment with your clientele. And yeah. We, like personally, the way that like I got ahead was by selling properties. I didn't have the cash flow to be able to keep a million dollar property and then go and buy another million dollar property and spend another two hundred thousand yeah. dollars. It just sort didn't of like the work. leveraging technique. That's right. Yeah. Like I've got a family to feed. Like I've yeah. got cars. We've got you know we want to go on holidays. Like yeah. trying to live within our means and then do all this. It just wasn't didn't mm. work for us. Yep. So we had to be creative about it. And my personal process now is buy one, keep it buy one, sell it. So nice. adding value, keeping the property, yep. putting in the rental pool. Obviously, I'm all for positively ge- positive gearing. That's my yep. personal strategy. Like obviously, obviously, I've got financial advice to sort of help with that. So everyone's situation is different. Yep. But yep. I'm, I think if you're, you're making money, you're paying tax, you're making money, who cares? Like that gives you a better position to, ma- to buy another one. Yep. Um, and then sell the second one for cash flow. Yep. Third one, keep. Fourth one, sell. So, um, you know, that's that's kind of personally what, what I'm doing. And and it is more aligned with the people we talk to and our clients because yeah. they want to do the same thing. They don't necessarily yeah. want to have, um, you know, 60 properties. But and retire th- before they're 35. <laughs> yeah, they're happy working. Yeah. They've got their, f- their families. Mm, yeah. and like there's – you can't sort of break the system like that. And yeah. There's nothing wrong with, with stacking your bread, I think, and working nine till five and yeah. – but being smart about it and yeah. having – the plan that we put in place just so with with this these milestones saying that in two years time we must buy a property that is giving us five percent yield we can spend between this much and this much in order for us to meet our goals and then Mm -hmm. when we hit that milestone we have to purchase another one in the next five years so by the time they retire when they're 55 or 60 or 70 when it might be they've got their 10 properties they're they've paid 80 percent of the loans off Mm -hmm. they're getting a passive Two and a half thousand dollars a fortnight, or whatever, whatever it might be that we we set it up. Yep. The value of those properties is worth five million dollars. Yep, they've got their super fund, but then they've also got these investment properties, properties. that they're yep. set up as well. So yeah, yep. that is the goal. Hey, yeah. properties just the properties working in the back end for you. Yep, yeah, it's and it's just so so easy. Like it, not, it's awesome when a, you buy a property and they get the val done, and the val's like thirty grand more. And you're mm. like, yeah. You, you, I hate the term. You've made thirty grand, but yeah, you kind of have. Like yeah. you've kind <laughs> of, you know, if you were to liquidate that, yeah. you obviously you've paid stamps and stuff, so it's probably half of that. But you know, you've gone that value of that property has gone up by thirty yeah. grand in this settlement time. Mm. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. And they're like, yeah, that is cool. Like yeah. that would take me three months or four months or whatever to earn that much money. Yeah. So yeah, it is cool reflection to have and and help people achieve that. So. And what is your point on? Um, What's your take on timing the market? Because I think like in our industry too, you know, we chat to so many people wanting to purchase property or whatnot and sometimes they're like, oh, you know, I've been speaking to this person and we think uh, it's probably best we just wait um, till the market comes down or whatnot. Do you kind of, I guess, believe in, um, you know, kind of getting in when you can and doing what you can with what you've got and seeing it out like or – really knowing the market, doing your research to try buy and low and there's a huge uh, um, element to that. Like you really do need to, if you are going to delve into it that deep, then there is times you can buy and sell. And I often mm. say, look back to look forward. So yep. look at the her- historic data mm. where our economy's at, where interest rates are at, you know, what government's um, in at the moment. And you can sort of get an idea of the cycle. previously. Yeah. Yep. The cycle when that was happening, what's mm. going to happen in the future in saying that, I live by two mottos when it comes to purchasing. Time in the market is better than timing the market. Yeah. Yep. And the best time to buy was yesterday. Yeah. So what we do here at Quantum is we say, let us help you engineer value into that property. So if we buy well and we engineer money, the engineer value into that property in the correct way, it doesn't matter what happens if there's a downturn and your property goes down yep. 10%, which would be huge, like – what we've just sort of come off the back the back of with COVID, 
because we've engineered 20% of value. So you're still up mm. 10%, right? Yep. So com- it's more commercially sensible to do it the way that we are suggesting mm. than it is wasting six to 12 months trying thinking, to oh, pickpocket this exact period this is, where... That's right. Yeah. Is yeah. it going to be perfect? Is now going to be right? Who cares? We've already finished the Renault and we're off on yep. the second one. Mm. So that's the way we go about it with our clients. and Sort of like a surfer mentality. You know, you can sit there and wait for the perfect wave or you can ride each set as it comes in. Kind 100%. Of thing. Yeah. yeah. We are like, the sets just keep coming for us. <laughs> <laughs> pumping. Yeah. It is pumping out there, guys. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So I guess that's that's my take on that. So, yeah, yeah it's, uh, I you see so many people who are just sitting on the fence, waiting, oh, waiting, and they yeah. are getting left behind. There is no yeah. doubt about it. Ask any selling agent, ask any buyer's agent, they're getting left behind. Yeah. You see a lot of people as well, like, timing the market and then you know obviously in that sense they end up doing a refinance over and over again then they start talking to us and it's like mate we need to buy it's like well we started the conversation six months ago are you actually ready to buy yeah, yeah that's and then right they came back and the only yeah. thing holding you back is 100 <laughs> percent. so when interest rates were going up and then we was having those people we had some clients like we would put these great opportunities in front of them we're yeah like, guys we have to go on this like this yep. is good you know all of it ticks all your boxes yeah like, we just want to wait and see what happens with interest rates yeah. And then the interest rates would go up and then their broker would call us up and be like, hey, mate, that's 650 serviceability is down to 620 now. Yeah. We're like, guys, those opportunities that we had are gone. Yep. We can't get you that product anymore. Mm. And then unfortunately, they were like, oh, okay, well, let's just take what we can get. Yeah. And they no, it, that's the heartbreaking part about being in this industry, hey? Yeah. 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 But, you know, as long as you're providing the facts. Yeah. It, the ball's in their court, right? That's yep. what we're trying to do. We're trying to educate them as yep. as well and, and keep them as informed as we can. And then, you know, they're big, big girls and big boys. They yeah. can make decisions themselves. Correct. They got the mm-hmm. info. So it makes our job a lot easier as well when we're teaching them along the way. So yeah. that's right. Yeah. That's what it's about. It's like yeah, teaching, exactly. learning education. Together. Yeah. Yep. In term, just a, for a practical question, let's say I'm wanting to buy an investment property. This is my first, second, regardless. And I can't toss up between an Airbnb or short-term holiday rental versus a bricks and mortar rental property. Sure. How would I make the decision between that and what are the pros and cons between each? Well, a location-based... Well, actually, sorry, probably a better question would be how do you decide between those two because you've probably had both. and You've obviously made the decision to go Airbnb this time. How do you make those two decisions? Well, again, it's about risk, right? Yep. So how can we reduce the risk on that investment? Um, a, a location-based property is always going to perform on Airbnb and in a rental market. So yeah, yeah. if I were to purchase a property in a um, dense housing area and try and Airbnb it, <laughs> I don't think the uh, occupancy numbers are going to be very high. The rental yeah. numbers will be there, but yeah. I won't be able to do both. So yeah. traditionally, close to a beach is always going to perform well or close to the city, yeah. um, you know, in Brisbane, like New Farm, Tenerife, those areas for apartments, fantastic Airbnb. Close to the beaches, within walking distance, the beach is always going to be a, a really good performer on Airbnb. And again, those those rental properties, people are, are going to want to walk there after school, you know, or just night walks. So they're always going to perform. So I think finding, making sure that location is right from the start of your search is always important. And that's always how we'll start a search. Yep. Um, at quantum is, is find out where they want to be and yep. like, is it and sometimes if it, if the budget doesn't suit we think how can we get there is it like can we go close to a train line or a bus line or something like yep. that or what are some other areas that would appeal to both parties or both types so it's and then if they do want to do the value for, add the value from there and do the renos then we'll say trying to do that high as high a spec reno as you possibly can because yep. you know that blue chip area will always perform better than than anywhere else yeah yeah so I guess that'd be my my feedback for that. No, awesome. Yeah. Well, guys, thanks so much for jumping on the podcast. Really Thank appreciate it. Um, just to rehash in case I did butcher the start <laughs> of the, all the businesses, because you maybe give us a quick rundown of the three different groups, sure. where we can find you, and uh, how they can get in contact with you guys. Your YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. So or are you going to be on the next season of the blog, maybe? <laughs> oh, I wish. I uh, actually the blog. Uh, 
when I started this business, I, I love Marty Fox, I reckon, from White yes. Fox. And yeah, yeah. he's just an absolute legend. And when I, I saw him speak on the Gold Coast a few weeks ago, and then yeah. I saw he was on the block, and I was like, oh, my goodness, I haven't watched the block in so long, but this year <laughs> I'm watching it because Marty's on there. Um, so we've got Quantum Buyers Advocacy yeah. so or Quantum Buyers Agency. So um, all your sort of one-stop buyers advocacy shop. Yeah. Uh, we've got Quantum Rentals, which we manage mostly just our investor clients, um, portfolio properties yep. portfolio so it means we can sort of keep keep track on what's going on and definitely how they're performing and keep them accountable to their goals so we can see what the valuation is and yep. how they're performing to go and buy a third and then the uh the third property uh, sorry the third business and uh, the newest to the um horse in the stable is uh qbm projects so quantum yep. building maintenance um and that's uh, run with a mate of mine jack and awesome. uh yeah they'll be sort of all maintenance and renovation needs so super that cool means. And where's the best place for people to find you? So uh, Instagram, uh, we've just got a brand new website, which is super exciting, or Nick Esplin on on um, social media. Perfect. Yeah. How about you? Hey, same sort of thing, Instagram yeah, yeah. Um, and the website as well. So the website is just Jade, so you'll you'll find it to meet the team. Meet the team. <laughs> Perfect. Hit the link. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, thanks so guys. much for jumping on, guys. Thanks and for having us. Uh, thanks for having us. Thank you for listening. Chat to you guys soon. See ya. Cheers. Bye.